Hello, it's Ruby, and today marks the first of my back to school new academic year series. And today I'm going to be talking through 10 study habits, which I would recommend you setting in place ready for the new academic year, and also how to make them stick. Now the first thing is making notes from the beginning of the year and keeping everything in one place. I think one of the best things you can do as a student is every day after class go through and collate your notes and move it all into one centralised location. This is five minutes which you carve out and ideally you want to habit stack this so you get home and this is the first thing you do. This doesn't mean you have to sit there and rewrite all of your notes because that is a big task that could take you an hour and it's probably not sustainable to say you have to do that every day but in these five minutes you want to go through all of your documents you want to throw away anything you don't need. You want to move everything into centralized folders. But the big, big tip is scanning in pictures of your physical notes and then moving this to a folder on your computer, maybe Google Drive. And this is such an important habit as a student because it will mean that all of your things are backed up and that you'll never lose anything. Number two is to spend time after every class free writing and reflecting on what you covered. So just sit down with a pen and paper and write, make a note of key concepts covered, key ideas, key questions, and then add personal reflections to foster critical thinking and synthesize thoughts. This is an incredibly effective practice and will just help with your analysis and understanding of topics. Now, the third thing is to maximize your learning and your teaching time by preparing ahead of class. You only have a limited number of contact hours and those hours spent with your teacher are some of the most valuable. So before class, glance through homework and last week's work just to re-familiarise yourself with it, but also have a quick look through what you're going to cover in that lesson. For example, you might want to familiarise yourself with essential terminology, key concepts. The other thing I'd recommend is jotting down any questions you might have or that might have come up that week on a sticky note and then putting that right at the front of your folder where you can easily see it. And also just things you might want to learn more about. At university, it's not uncommon for the teacher to ask what direction you'd like to go in and it's good to have a ready response to this because it means that you can help to shape where the class goes and cover something that you're really interested in. Habit number four is to keep a list of things you find interesting during the year. Make this really easy to find. Maybe it's in your notes on your phone or your computer. Maybe it's in your academic planner or your everyday notebook and just bullet point anything and everything you find particularly interesting. This is really good to do because you can then use this when writing essays and deciding what you want to focus on in an essay. Now number five is more health related and that is to make sure you are getting enough sleep and that you're keeping to a good sleep schedule. We all know this, we all know how important sleep is, but do we know how important it is? Honestly, it's probably one of the best things you can do to study more effectively. So did you know that about 35% of students will stay up past 3 a.m. more than once a week, which is terrible, but sleep is one of the most important things we can get. And actually in 2019, an MIT study found that the less students slept during the term, the worse their test scores were. So these are the three reasons that sleep is important. Number one, it can help us consolidate what we've been learning. We temporarily store information in the hippocampus, but this has limited storage capacity. Information moves from here to elsewhere in the brain when we sleep, and so sleep can improve our memory. Uh, and actually Quintilian, writing in the fifth century CE said, it is a curious fact of which the reason is not obvious that the interval of a single night will greatly increase the strength of the memory. Then the second thing is, that it will obviously just help you focus. We focus better when we're not tired, that goes without saying. Finally, there is some evidence to suggest that we are more creative problem solvers when we've had enough sleep. But how do we do this? Ahead of the academic year, you want to set a good morning and night routine, which you can feasibly stick to when term starts. And you do want to keep in mind that you might be more tired in the evenings than you are right now. So try to be realistic and create something which is actually going to work for you. If you struggle with getting up early and getting out of bed, I would also recommend recommend the app Alarmy. I've been using this for a couple of years and basically to turn off the alarm you have to do a certain task. So for example I've got to get up and scan a barcode in order for me to turn the alarm off and this is fantastic because it stops me from snoozing because I'm already up. It forces me to get out of bed. Number six is to set aside actual study time, like scheduled study time for extra learning and going beyond what your teacher or the specification sets. So maybe that's one extra essay a week. 
that you read on something you find interesting and make a habit of carving out a set time in your week to do this. Benjamin Franklin quite rightly says, an investment in knowledge always pays the best interest. If you do this extra research, you will end up getting more from the material that you study in class. You will have a better understanding of what you are studying, which will help with your analysis. And most importantly, it can help you to develop interest and learning motivation outside of just a specification. The seventh thing is to make sure you're writing every day. Academic writing, I mean. 10 minutes of academic writing practice every day is I think the best thing you can do as a student. I did this the whole way through GCSE A-level. Basically you wanna be writing in the kind of style you'd be writing in for an essay. And the reason this is so valuable and such a good study habit is that it helps to reduce resistance to writing. We all know that daunting feeling of sitting down with a blank piece of paper and having to write. But if you've been doing this every single day, then it just becomes less scary. Aside from that, it will also improve your written expression because writing, like anything, is a skill. Number eight is coming up with a planning system of how you're going to keep track of your assignments during the year. Staying on top of work is the trick to getting everything done. So you want to make sure that you are writing down tasks. So come up with a planning system, use an academic planner. Here is the academic planner that I sell on my stationery shop, Pumpkin Productivity. You might also use a website like Notion or Momentum, but just have a centralized space where you can keep track of your tasks. Now, ideally you want to try and get tasks done as soon as you get them. So try and do them on the night that they're set. But the further you get through education, the less feasible this becomes because they're often big tasks that you're set. And when it is a big task, write it on the sticky note and put it up above your desk so that you don't forget about it and you kind of have that task like on your mind. The ninth thing is another health related one, which is to make sure you are drinking enough water. This is again, one of the best things you can do for your brain. Water is associated with the ability to recall information and stay focused. This is because water transports oxygen to the brain and that just helps it function more effectively. And so even being just slightly dehydrated can drastically affect and reduce your concentration. If you struggle to stay hydrated and struggle to drink enough, the biggest tip I can give is always to keep a water bottle with you. So keep it on your desk to drink while working. Recommend having one with a straw because you're more likely to drink from it. But also keep a water bottle in your bag and always fill this up before a lesson. At university, I made this a non-negotiable thing which I had to do. So even if I was running late for a class, I would make sure my water bottle was full. And then the final thing is if you're studying something which requires memorization, that's to make Quizlet sets or flashcards as you're going along. So once a week, go through, transfer all of the key information you have to memorize onto flashcards or onto Quizlet. It's just such a long, arduous task to sit down and make all of your flashcards for the whole year at once. And so if you stagger this, it just becomes a bit more manageable. Um, and actually as part two of that, if you've got them already made, it means you can get into the habit of looking over this often. Flashcards are a form of active recall, which is is of course the most effective study tactic. So it's good to get into the habit of frequently going through flashcards. I always used to keep a pack of flashcards in my pocket when I was at school and I liked having the Quizlet app on my phone so I could easily go through flashcards if I was ever waiting for something and had a spare few minutes. So that's all of the tips I've got to share with you but before we end this video I wanted to talk through some very quick advice on how to make habits stick because it's all very well going in with the motivation of I really want to do this thing but how do you actually get it to stick? I am going to refer to the wonderful book Atomic Habits by James Clear, which has been recommended to no end online, um, but I think that's for good reason. And James Clear notes that habits account for 40% of our everyday behavior, which is why having good habits is so important, especially at the start of the school year when motivation is high, it's very common to come up with a long list of things that we're going to do, uh, new habits, new goals, but then these end up petering out a couple of months into the year. So I've got three top tips on how to make your habits stick. So Leo Babauta says that you need to make it so easy that you can't say no. And really the trick to this is making it easier to do the thing than to not do the thing. And to do that, you need to take away choice. So that's where things like timetabling, to-do lists, routines become really valuable because you know what you're going to do. You don't have that element of choice and you don't have that moment of thinking like, okay, I could do this habit or I could do this thing that I'd much rather be doing. The big thing here is setting up systems which make it easy to do this thing. The second thing is understanding why you want to do these habits and understanding the value that they will bring to your life. And finally, number three, write it down. Like Gatsby, where he has this list of all the things that he wants to do and he has a list of his goals. If you write something down, it holds you accountable and you're more likely to stick to it and to do it so don't underestimate the power of pen and paper but anyway that brings us to the end of today's video uh, i really hope you enjoyed watching it and i hope that you have more than just a productive week